Yeah, this looking for this Rufus Crown Sparrow was quite the hike. Like you could just tell by like our legs and our shoes. I feel a little beat up. Everything, everything that we walked through, all the sweat. Yeah, I feel very sweaty and very it. beat up. But uh, oh, there's something on top of there. Oh, that's the painted bunting. We're in Oklahoma, the nation's 20th largest state, doing some birding in the region with our friend Alex, who's a graduate student at Oklahoma State University studying entomology. After seeing some new species around Stillwater, Oklahoma, we're headed to a unique area unlike anything we've ever seen before, Gloss Mountain State Park. Gloss Mountain State Park is a 640-acre expanse encompassing many breathtaking landscapes including a series of mesas and buttes. The Americans who first explored this region referred to them as the Glass Mountains due to the high selenite gypsum composition that can be seen in the red clay that forms the landscape. However, a transcription error by a cartographer in 1875 led to them being referred to as the Gloss Mountains, and both names are used to this day. At the state park, the largest attraction is the Cathedral Mountain Trail, which takes you to the top of one of the large mesas, about 150 feet from the bottom of the plains. As we drove closer to our destination, the distant views of the landscape were already making us eager to explore. This is a place if we were passing it, it'd be like, oh, I want to go there. There we are. I know. This is great. This is really cool. I have never been to a place like this before, so I'm really excited to see what is all here and if we can find our two target birds. Our two target birds for the day are Rock Wren and Rufus Crown Sparrow, both of which had been reported at the area in the past. Also on our list is to get a good view of a male painted bunting. With the adrenaline of exploring a new location, we hiked to the top of the Cathedral Mountain Trail. However, we didn't have much time to catch our breath and take in the view before spotting a colorful animal perfectly at home on top of a mesa. Lizard! Where? Right there. Alex! Oh, Alex, yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a collared lizard. The common collared lizard, also known as the eastern collared lizard, or mountain boomer, is the state reptile of Oklahoma. They are named for their distinct coloration, including bands of black around the neck and shoulders that appear to form a collar. Males are brighter in coloration, painted with blues, greens, and yellows, while females are more drab shades of brown with a slight green wash. Common collared lizards have a large head and strong jaws, and can also run on their hind legs, reaching speeds of around 16 miles per hour. After observing the collared lizard, we were able to safely catch it in order to get a closer look. This is the coolest thing I have ever caught. Look at him, he's so beautiful. Sorry I freaked you out, little guy. Look at his tail, he's such a nice specimen. Wow, this is just incredible. We released our new friend and began walking around the top of the mesa, hearing multiple painted buntings calling from below, but never sitting up long enough to give us a good view. While Ryan and I were searching, Alex called us over to look at a particularly large arachnid. How'd you see it? Did it just walk it across? It just walked right onto the trail. Wow. Come on, you can do it. Oh, oh he doesn't like you. Oh. I see. The Texas brown tarantula is one of the most common tarantula species in the southern United States. Their body coloration is variable between different shades of brown and they are known to be a rather docile species. When threatened, they will stand on their hind legs and raise their front legs up in an intimidating stance. A bite from the species is generally not serious unless infected or an allergic reaction occurs. This is a Texas brown tarantula. It is the only tarantula found in Oklahoma. And this is a male, which is typically what you see wandering around. The females usually just sit in their burrows waiting for food to come past, where the males are kind of crawling around. The males typically just live one or two years, whereas the females can live anywhere from like five to ten years. Um, so they can live quite a while. And as you can see, I'm not afraid of him. He's relatively harmless. Their bites are not very venomous, so they're okay to hold. They're not very aggressive, and he's just going about his day, looking for a female and looking for food. 
After persuading the tarantula to crawl off of Alex, we parted ways and decided we might need to change locations if we wanted to find our target birds. All right, well, as beautiful as the view is up here, and it's absolutely gorgeous, I think we're going to head down to look for birds because there's not a ton of bird activity from up here. Most of the stuff we're seeing is down below, kind of in more um, the lower areas. We did get the awesome collared lizard, and seeing the tarantula was super cool. But we're going to head down to see if we can find some of the birds we've been looking for. I wonder where all the birds are. What are the odds we find one of our target species? Pretty good. I think things are going to get a little active as we progress. It gets a little bit cooler. I think things are just kind of hunkered down right now. As the heat subsided, we walked around the edges of the plains and kept a close eye out for rattlesnakes. During our search, we picked out an eastern meadowlark and heard some calls we thought might belong to the rufous-crowned sparrow. Somewhere over there. One, two. There's at least two. Several. Eventually, we were able to get a view of one of the birds low in a shrub. I think you're right. I think that's it. We just had a rufous crowned sparrow, but it's pretty backlit here, so we're going to try to go around and see if we can get a better look. As we moved over for better lighting, one of the sparrows perched up high in a tree. That was a lot of work. I feel very relieved. And he's really nicely out in the open. This is perfect. The Rufus Crown Sparrow is an attractive, long-tailed sparrow with a Rufus cap, white eye ring, Rufus striping on the back, a black and white malar stripe, and a gray stomach. They are non-migratory species and rarely fly long distances, preferring to hop along on the ground. In fact, the longest distance recorded by a Rufus Crown Sparrow in flight at one time is 540 feet. They're at home in hot and rocky areas, on or around hillsides, and often forage in sparse brush or grasses. The Rufus Crown Sparrow feeds mostly on insects, seeds, and plant material, and normally nests on the ground or at the base of a shrub, up to one and a half feet off the ground. We just found the Rufus Crown Sparrow, which was really cool. That's a lifer for both of us. We heard them singing, and then we eventually saw one kind of pop up on the branches. We're also hearing a lot of lark sparrows. And then there's also the painted buntings, which are very elusive. Looking for this Rufus Crown Sparrow was quite the hike. Like, you could just tell by like our legs and our shoes. I feel a little beat up. Everything, everything that we walked through, all the sweat. Yeah, I feel very sweaty and very it. beat up. But, uh, oh, there's something on top of there. Oh, that's the painted bunting. The painted bunting is an extravagantly colored songbird at home in edge habitat between fields and shrubby forests. Females are yellow-green with a pale eye ring, and males are a striking assortment of colors with a blue head, red-orange stomach and lower back, and green upper back. The French name for the painted bunting is non pare, meaning without equal, referring to the bright and unique plumage of the male. There are two main breeding populations of painted bunnings in the United States, one in the south central U.S. and one in the coastal southeast. Their range extends into Central America and the Caribbean, where they are sometimes illegally trapped and sold in the pet trade. Painted bunnings feed mostly on seeds and insects, and usually create a nest between three to six feet off the ground, where three to four eggs are laid. What's up? Painted bunting. Yeah, you please. Great news, yeah, he was here earlier, and then he left, and so I set up waiting for him and he came back to the exact spot. In addition to our first great looks at a male painted bunting, we also saw a northern cardinal and a female dick sizzle, but didn't see or hear any definite signs of rock runs. While walking, it was impossible not to notice the material that gave the area its name. So this is why this was originally called Glass Mountain, because this gypsum looks completely glassy and it's covering this whole place. Really cool crystalline structure. As the sunlight faded, the nocturnal animals began to stir, including a skunk, a common nighthawk, and our first owl species of the trip. So right here is a great horned owl. And he's been calling for quite a while, and it's just so cool to see one in this habitat, because I'm so used to seeing them in forests that to see one in a place like this where he's just calling and owning the landscape is just really awesome. When the sun finally set, we headed back to Stillwater, reminiscing about our exciting day. 
Even though we didn't end up seeing one of our target birds, the great views of rufous crowned sparrows, painted buntings, common collared lizards, and a Texas brown tarantula along with the amazing landscape made it a trip we won't soon forget. Gloss Mountain State Park is definitely a gem in Oklahoma, and we encourage you to visit it if you're ever in the area. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Ooh, that's good. We're good. It's pretty mountain. Oh, I thought it said mountain social distance. You good? Mm -hmm. Did you notice that we're matching blue? I know. By this accident. Happened. We didn't plan this. Nope.